Hello, this is Mrs. Chavez, and we're on our um, section three. We're going to be talking about borders and boundaries today. Borders are important in our world, you know, because borders, like other human institutions, have both instrumental and symbolic functions. The instrumental function of an international border is to mark the place on the ground where one country ends and another one begins. Borders also matter because they have symbolic significance. So let's look at the different types of borders that were um, that are in this chapter. Some are international boundaries. These are boundaries which delineate the space of a country, its government, its people, and generally its identity. International boundaries are usually created through um, legal treaties between governments and are not easily changed. The precise delineation of boundaries is relatively new in human history. Before the availability of surveying and cartographic technologies, impediments to travel such as mountain ranges, water bodies, or even features such as um, forest and desert were used to separate the territories of political entities. And these were called antecedent boundaries. In Europe, the, in 1648, the Peace of Westphalia gave rise to a more um, territorially based notion of the um, state creating an imperative for delineation and demarcation of boundaries and the establishment of border facilities. These are your subsequent boundaries. The colonial expansion of European states in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century led to the creation of many international boundaries that endured to this day, despite the fact that they were often drawn arbitrarily. These are called superimposed boundaries. As recently as the late 19th century, European powers delineated boundaries on the map of Africa without surveys on the ground and without regard to the economy or the culture of the African people. Until the second half of the 20th century, international boundaries were subject to change arising from diplomatic agreements and military conflict. In the years following World War II, an international consensus arose around the territorial integrity norm, a principle that in order to prevent an armed conflict, existing boundaries should be created, should be treated as unchangeable. Well, this has led to the um, preservation of colonial era boundaries that have negatively impacted economic and cultural development in Africa. The frequency of wars over territory has declined. This doesn't mean that the political map has remained unchanged. The disintegration of states, including the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia into multiple smaller states, has created new international boundaries within the pre-existing boundaries, while the German unification in 1991 involved the dissolution of a boundary that has divided Europe for decades. Those are called relic boundaries. The most obvious type of boundary is the um, physical boundary, and it's uh, naturally occurring. Uh, it's a barrier between two areas. Rivers, mountain ranges, oceans, and deserts um, can all serve as physical boundaries. Um, many times, political boundaries between countries or states actually form along these physical boundaries. For example, the boundary between France and Spain follows the peaks of the Pyrenees Mountains, and the Alps separate France from Italy. The Strait of Gibraltar is the boundary between southwestern Europe and northwestern Africa. It's a very narrow waterway between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, and it's become an important political, economic, and social boundary between the two continents. Rivers are common boundaries between nations, states, and smaller political units, such as counties. The Rio Grande forms a large part of the boundary between Mexico and the United States. The Mississippi River um, is the defining boundary between many of the states it winds through, including Iowa and Illinois, Arkansas, Tennessee, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Another type of boundary are called geometric boundaries. These are formed by straight lines. These are lines of latitude and longitude and occasional arcs. Pennsylvania and Delaware are an example of that. Regardless of the physical and cultural features of the area, the for example, the Canadian U.S. border along the 49th parallel is a good example of a geometric boundary. These are artificial boundaries. Another type of boundary are frontier zones. Um, because um, borderlands and frontiers are zones between two uh, different organizations, they are also zones of intense interaction of objects and people and ideas. This interaction can range from very peaceful, 
mutually beneficial relationships to constant warfare. Oftentimes, several types of inter interactions along um, the, along the zone range from peaceful to warlike and can occur simultaneously. For instance, along the northern frontier of New Spain, what is now the southwestern United States, various indigenous groups um, would have peaceful trading relations with some Spanish villages while they were raiding others. This also occurred among various indigenous groups. Indeed, at times, um, those opposite relations were not between the different indigenous groups and villages, but varied from family group to family group on both sides. In short, frontiers are zones of intense interaction, often of the several types of the sa at the same time. These interactions can change rapidly with local circumstances. This local, uh, this local variability and volatility is a special characteristic of frontiers and borderlands. Well, there is no doubt that boundaries can oftentimes create disputes. Um, they create problems and uh, conflicts and even war. And there's several different types of reasons why these boundary disputes um, come about. Since World War II, half of the world's international borders have been involved in border disputes with their neighbors. Well, let's look at a, a couple of these boundary disputes. There are four major ones. The um, first one we'll look at is the positional boundary dispute, and that's um, along the border, and the disputes um, occur when two states are both opposed to the interpretation of the documents that define their particular boundary. The most common cause is the presence of some kind of ambiguous phrase in, in the delimination of a boundary that's never been demarcated. Two more are the territorial and the resource disputes. Now, conflicts between states or regions over the ownership of a given area, that's one of the reasons. Reasons for territorial claims include uh, a country's desire to increase its power, uh, a political need to divert attention from existing powers, um, claimed rights to an area based on history, ethnicity, or geography. Irredentism um, is that conflict that arises when people of one state want to annex a territory whose population is ethnically related to them, but subjected to foreign governments. This took place quite often during World War II, especially with Hitler, when he annexed Czechoslovakia because they had a very large German population. Um, Poland, they had a very large German population. Um, so another type is the resource dispute. Now, conflicts over the use of resources um, usually are created or complicated by a boundary line. Reasons for the dispute could include um, maybe the resource is on both sides of the border. Um, it straddles the border. Maybe there's um, a river basin or there's oil feeds, fields, things like that. Another reason why resource disputes can um, take place, and we sometimes call them environmental disputes, is when one person on one side of the border accuses the other one on the other side of the border of uh, using um, this resource and um, causing it to become depleted. Another type of dispute is called the functional dispute. Now, functional disputes are conflicts over policies. These are national policies that um, each country applies at their border. We know them as immigration laws. Um, reasons for functional disputes include, of course, immigration or customs regulations. Um, some good examples are if people need a visa or papers to cross a border, um, land use and location policies between neighbors. Um, for example, locating landfills or polluting industries near the border. 